Hey guys, my name is Ryan. And my name is Miska. Welcome to Overwatch Central. So the new Symmetra rework has been revealed. Jeff Kaplan first talked about it in a developer update on the Play Overwatch YouTube channel, and then just later that evening the PTR was updated and the changes were added. This is the first time we've seen a complete ability rework from a hero as we've only seen tweaks to current abilities changed in the past. In this video we'll be showing gameplay of the new Symmetra as we discuss the main question. Is the new Symmetra any good? If you want a quick run through of the abilities including numbers and estimates, then do check out the video that's appearing on screen now. In this video we're going to go over an overall impression on the redesign, but anyway let's get straight to the video and see if these changes really are what Symmetra need. With the new Symmetra, Blizzard wanted to address two main aspects. The first one being that she wasn't active enough. She set up, gave people shields and just sort of stuck around until she had a teleporter ready. The second aspect was how incredibly situational Symmetra was. So the developers wanted to make Symmetra more active and versatile overall to have her be played for longer than just the first point of defense for a capture point of some maps. The photon barrier was added to make her more active and the shield generator was added as a second ultimate to make sure that she had an alternative to the teleporter after the first capture point was taken. These other changes to the sentry turrets and primary fire are kind of just quality of life changes more than anything else though. Now we all know what Symmetra was like before these changes and how people looked at a Symmetra pick on their team. It wasn't a good position for any hero to be in, but will these changes actually accomplish these goals that Blizzard set for themselves? The redesign definitely enables Symmetra to work more with her team in more situations, and it makes her more versatile than before. In choke points on attack for example, she can throw her photon barrier towards the defending team whilst her team push through. Gives them a little bit of space as well. The shield generator's range allows for versatile use whilst the teleporter can still keep its standard usage. The changes seem pretty good on paper at least, but is it enough? The generator 75 shield HP is a good amount, but is it worth staying on Symmetra to use that or change it to a Mercy for example? Is it enough? The photon shield moves just a little bit too fast to keep up with sometimes, but other than that we've not seen any real drastic changes. But she's definitely not any worse in that aspect. She hasn't lost any integral parts for kit, she's just gained new bits. And this makes her stronger in the field she was already strong in. But if it actually enables her enough to be played when attacking for example or on a game mode like Control, that's something we're feeling a little bit more sceptical towards. And to be completely honest, we're leaning towards these changes not being quite enough in that aspect of Symmetra's play. All of the other supports are in a pretty comfortable place right now, so it's more of a case of how does she compete against them than how does she stand on her own. But without a doubt she's definitely a lot stronger than she was before, so she is a lot stronger in those situations that she was viable in, and hopefully she'll be a lot less situational than she was before as well. Right, as for the meta and Symmetra situation there, as well as the position in the hero roster, we're feeling like she'll get a slight bump in win and pick rate. She'll definitely still be towards the lower end of the table for pick rate though, and will maintain her role of a mainly defensive hero. This is interesting as she's still classed as support despite all the suggestions to put her in the defensive hero category. Category. And none of those other support heroes lean as heavily towards attacking or defending as Symmetra does. It's gonna be interesting to see if she'll be picked up at all in pro level tournament play or not. As of right now, I think it's too early to tell to be honest, but I do think that the upcoming meta is a lot more favored towards tanks, with Soldier 76 thrown in there as well, and Symmetra in herself isn't particularly good against either of these. One thing I am just a little bit worried about though, is that the shield generator adds even more HP to a hero for a longer duration, sort of messing with the maximum health cap for a lot of the heroes. And on top of that you have Torbjorn armor, kind of a nice synergy there with 150 extra HP basically. But I'm a little bit worried, I'm not sure what's gonna happen here with all of these extra HP. We're gonna be seeing 200 HP heroes go all the way up to 350 HP in some cases. We'll see how effective that is exactly, but yeah, that's something to look out for. We're gonna have to wait and see for more clarity on her position in the meta though, but in the end what really matters is how she runs in ranked and unranked match made games. We also wanted to get you guys involved with this video, so we tweeted out last night asking you guys what you thought the Symmetra changes, and here are some of your tweets. There were a lot of replies and unfortunately we can't include all of them because we'd be here all day. Starting with JJ Summer who says she feels way more flexible now, I can see viability from her on 2 capture point attack now, not sure about payload and hybrid. She does have her uses on hybrid maps for sure, uh, Hollywood springs to mind, Symmetra setting up on the first point could be a pain in the ass to break through, and that's going to be a lot more difficult to break through now as well. But yeah, once you lose that point and it becomes a payload map, 
I don't know if I'd want to stay on Symmetra, even with the shield generator. Payload maps, well, it depends. At the start of the map, again, Route 66 is a really good example. You could really stop them in their tracks. So setting up a Symmetra there is actually quite a good thing to do, and it might work more now with these new changes. Michael said she's still a defense only character until proven otherwise, and if you need a moving shield, why not just use a Reinhardt or Diva? Now we'll go over how it affects tanks in a second as it goes into the next reply that we got. But I definitely agree that she is definitely defense orientated overall, and that's not necessarily a bad thing to have. Of course, each hero in Overwatch is more orientated to attack or defense, ignoring the roles of attack and defense. So say I think Winston's a lot better on attack than he is defense. So it's not necessarily a bad thing to have Symmetra still be defensive based. And really that's gonna be the case with her turrets as well. You can't really use them in an offensive capability compared to using them defensively. But yeah, talking about tanks, it kind of goes into our next response from Susu, who says that she's so good for initial pushes. But meanwhile, in the new meta, which is free tanks in 76, it's kind of useless. And I don't necessarily agree with that. We may see something that she's used alongside the triple tanks in 76 as more shields and more barriers. And especially with a shield generator, imagine that on free tanks and how much sustain that is. She might enable triple tanks a lot more than before, which isn't necessarily a good thing. But with the damage that's been thrown around a lot of the time, she can get picked off pretty easily, especially without having the support of herself. She has a photo barrier, sure, but if she's using that to defend herself from a Sombra that's attacking her, it kind of just disappears before it's actually done. You know, it's already pissed off across the map sort of thing. And finally, a couple of tweets talking about how the barrier is too fast. First from Jolif Boom saying that the floating shield of hers needs to slow the hell down, and I really think they need some edges on the side for better cover. Yeah, the ecliptic shape is a little bit weird, and we agree with you alongside White Rabbit, who said that I like abilities, but a barrier moves too fast. And I hope we can see more dual ultimates. It allows to play with more variety. And I think this is the key thing that I like from these changes. Lizard's idea to sort of think outside the box and go, we want her to have more usage, but her ultimate is too good, but too situationally good. So we're going to give her the option to choose something else. I would like to see this more, for sure. And I hope that we can see more heroes in the future have the ability to play in two styles. It's fairly MOBA-esque in that department, but I do think it's quite a good thing to have. But yeah, do let us know what you think in the comments as well. We're really interested to hear what you guys have to say about this. So all in all, Symmetra is definitely in a better spot and her toolkit is a lot broader than before. This should give her a nice bump in viability, but she's still situational in comparison to the other supports. Overall, people seem to like what Blizzard have done with abilities, making the hero more active and fun to play, but her position in the meta still doesn't seem to be very strong. Drop any thoughts on this in the comments below or to us on Twitter via at OWCentral. We'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Season 3 is definitely going to be an interesting one with essentially two new heroes now that some Sombra has arrived and Symmetra is finally back in action. And that's it for this time, thank you very much for watching. Again, do let us know what you think of Symmetra in the comments below. And until next time, take care, we'll see you then.